In college, I wanted to be a marine biologist and I uh, was very enamored with the natural sciences. But after college, I decided to work, like many young people, and I began working in healthcare uh, with Planned Parenthood, the county health department, and a low-income clinic, La Casa de la Raza, for about three years, and got the medical care bug from that kind of experience with a very strong public health interest. I lead a very incredible group of interdisciplinary team faculty here at Michigan with uh, faculty at other universities as well um, in cancer quality of care and communication. So we have the only program funded by the NIH in treatment decision making for any condition it happens to be in cancer, primarily focused on breast cancer. There is a revolution going on today in cancer care. Um, like no other time do we have information that can inform better ways of treating people with cancer. At the same time, it's very difficult because the complexity of that information is ever more complex. It's ever more difficult to translate that to patients. So we're seeing uh, the need for more navigation, the need for more tools for patients and doctors used to communicate. We're evaluating those tools. We're developing them at Michigan under IHPI, and we're evaluating those tools to improve women's health in the context of breast cancer. We're also doing large population studies in states, California and Georgia, to evaluate the quality of care and communication for all patients in those regions. And our ability to do that is because of the technology today and the relationships that we have built both here under IHPI and also across universities, state health departments, and with the National Cancer Institute. We're improving the health of women with breast cancer on a national level. Their experiences and their survivorship, length of life, and the quality of life. The kind of work we're doing, we have women turning to us and say, thank you, thank you for my mother, thank you for my sister, and thank you for my daughter. And it makes me get out of bed in the morning and get working. The value of care is the most important thing that we have been dealing with since I began medical school in the 80s. And in some ways, nothing has changed. Costs are out of control, people are priced out of the insurance market, and co-pays and out-of-pocket expenses are rising. So today, those issues are even more prescient than they were 20 years ago. On the quality side, we've made tremendous inroads in to be able to measure quality, and now we've got to really hone in on improving quality. So it's improving value, both decreasing costs so that people can afford it, and maximizing the quality value. We're building ways to evaluate uh, healthcare conditions and to treat those conditions in ways that were unimaginable uh, 10 years ago. In cancer, it's a revolution, but we have a long way to go. In cancer in particular, the treatments cause a great deal of harm, not only health harms, but their cost harms. And so we have to understand not only what are the benefits of our treatments, but also the harms and the support. I would imagine in the future that we are directing treatment in a way that maximizes Minimizes the benefit, minimizes all of the harms. That's the revolution. The cost issue will be another major component of that. If we can't afford it, we can't deliver it. So the issues haven't changed that much, but I'm increasingly optimistic that um, we're going to provide better care. That value, that value of ratio, the value dimension in cancer care is really uh, moving forward at a clip.